Okay, hi. My name is Rebecca, and I'm presenting some work on behalf of my colleagues at Cambridge University, um, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Um, but hopefully I'm able to do their work some justice. Um, it's two PhD research in our group, Mark Allen and Alessandra Luna Navarro, um, supervised by Dr. Mauro Overend in the Glass and Fa Facade Technology Research Group at Cambridge University. Um, there's also some work that was um, attributed to Juan Diego at Politecno, Politecnico de Milano um, and a master student who won a Dyson Award for this research. So the project combines, as I say, the work of two PhD students bringing together different ongoing research in the glass and facade department. Um, the first PhD student, Mark Allen, was looking at how facial expressions relate to comfort, health and well-being. So the little red octopus on the screen here is a Raspberry Pi and it captures facial expressions acting as an expression sensor. And when combined with data from surveys, it allows us to be able to actually identify how the occupant is feeling within a particular environment. And the second PhD student, PhD student, Alessandra Luna Navarro, she's looking at occupant facade interaction, interaction and gathering data from occupants non-intrusively using Internet of Things devices and polling stations. So she's created a polling station where occupants are able to give feedback on how they feel about the environmental conditions and general occupant interaction. So the project began with an idea. Um, wouldn't it be interesting if smart glass could know when you were experiencing glare from occupant-centered data and adjust itself accordingly? So they, along with Dr. Mara Overend, got together and procured a master student to look into this idea and create a demonstration prototype. Juan Diego from Politecnico Milano uh, tried to test this code also on iris and pupil size detection and see how well it matched with other methods employed in this experiment. And the idea really is different to existing methods that you may use to control smart facades, for example, which are often rule-based and rely on sensors on the facade itself with some occupant override capabilities. So the motives really for this project were, non-surprisingly, carbon emissions and energy. So the trend of highly glazed buildings looks set to continue, as, as we know. And in the background, buildings contribute to around 40% of carbon emissions globally. So shading is very important in controlling the solar gains and retaining heat within building, and we need to learn how to do that effectively. Secondly, it's people, and so we think about glare and overheating. It can really interrupt people and have a negative effect on their comfort, health, and well-being. And further, a poor control strategy for the smart facades themselves can lead to occupants hacking the blind and potentially result in high energy use. So smart buildings themselves, we can think about how can we move towards more personal and tailored environments which can help maximize people's productivity and creativity and general well-being in an unobtrusive way? So the research question was, is it possible to effectively infer occupants' response to glare using non-invasive methods, particularly facial action units, so different movements within the face, and wearable light sensors. And there are three steps that the students in this project took to try and develop a methodology for this. The first being to develop a novel vertical illuminance wearable. Um, and this would be the use of existing technology put together in the form of a badge. Secondly, it's to investigate the use of different facial action units to actually detect glare. And third, it was to develop a learning algorithm to automatically detect subjective glare and then allow the blind or the smart glass to actually change accordingly to that personal occupant. So the first ta task of this project was building a sensor capable of capturing the vertical illuminance as close to the eye as possible. And they tried various ideas, including luck sensor glasses, However, eventually settled on a wearable badge. 
Um, the design behind this badge, it would have to be as small as possible and communicate wirelessly with the computer or data logger, which could then be used to control the smart facade. And so, pictured on the left here is uh, the device named the Sunflower, which uses Arduino technology to capture the data from a LUX sensor, which is then sent via Bluetooth and logs the data and then can be used to control the facade itself. So the case was laser cut from plywoods and acrylic, and you can see the data process diagram here of the data actually being recorded and then sent wirelessly to an external device. Secondly, as I mentioned, they're looking at facial action units, which are essentially a taxonomization of the face, and in various combinations make up facial expressions. Um, for example, the nose wrinkler is one action unit, and another one is brow lower, and a, a, another may be a cheek razor, and they can have different intensities on a scale for each person. The software used in this project was OpenFace, which is used to process the videos with the output as various facial action units, in addition to head movement, gaze, and pupil dilation. You can see how the software works in the diagram at the bottom, in which so at first it detects a face, and then it finds the landmarks before estimating a head pose and gaze directions and gathering those action units together. In the experiments within this set of this program, they used uh, a webcam on the laptop, but in future experiments, they want to use the Raspberry Pi that the PhD student Mark has been developing and a camera with an octopus um, named Octo. So all these values are stored at a rate of around 30 frames per second from a high definition video. So really defining the setup of this experiment was very important and a controlled office-like space was created within a laboratory with a virtual window to simulate the glare conditions. They weren't able to get smart glass for the nature of this project, so they, they tried to simulate it internally. So it consisted of a diffusive perspex window and with a controllable LED behind it. And the optical properties of every major surface within the environment was characterized with a DSLR camera with vertical illuminance sensor and placed behind, beside the occupant to measure the luminance values and also discomfort glare probability. Further, you can see the sunflower badge in this image here on the occupant and the octo sensor gathering video data and a horizontal look sensor. On the right, you can see the occupant's perspective on how the diff diffusive panel is simulating glare. So, for this experiment, occupants were welcomed into the room and sat down at the desk. And upon completing the consent form, they were left alone to complete an initial survey on how they were feeling in the environment before the experiment began. And at the end of the three tasks, which were all word searches that they had to complete, they were asked to complete a second survey, gathering information on how they felt during the experiment. Between the tasks, they were given two minutes to rest for their eyes to recover. And within each task, they had a different ramp cycle for the LED lighting itself. So for task one, as you can see in the table, intensity was slowly ramped up to full intensity. And then for task two, um, intensity was off for two minutes and then ramped up to half intensity. And for the final task, um, the LED was off for two minutes and then instantly turned on to full intensity for the remaining three minutes. And the time intervals were chosen based on the time it takes for the eye to respond and recover from glare from previous experiments. And participants were intentionally misled as to the purpose of the experiment within this. So they weren't told that they were measuring glare, for example. They were told that they were looking at productivity in different lighting conditions, but the true purpose was explained to them at the end of the test for clarity. And the various measurements captured during the experiments included daylight glare probability, vertical illuminance, peak luminance, and horizontal illuminance. So this slide here just shows a bit of a breakdown of one of the occupants' responses. So in total, 17 people volunteered for this particular experiment over a period of a couple of weeks. And out of those, nine participants had some noticeable change in the five action units, the facial action units that I spoke about before. 
and since glare primarily affects visual comfort, the reactions are hypothesized to be more profound in and around the eyes. So sadly, the software doesn't account for all action units, so just five were selected for the scope of this study. So on the screen here, you can see we have the brow layer at the top, and you can see how it corresponds with the looks readings and daylight glare probability. Responses were slightly different between individuals, and so the key takeaway really was that each person is very unique and, ha and, 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 and has an individual response to the glare conditions themselves. This, so this kind of really emphasizes why it would be useful to have a bespoke response for every different occupant within the environment. So this facial action unit here can really be imagined if you think about an occupant squinting as the light levels are increased, and that's why you see this brow lower effect. And there are just some more results here, which is just to highlight the difference as well between the different occupants. So on the left, you can see the brow razor action unit is active with low lux and DGP readings. And on the right, to the cheek razor action unit, which is active with low lux and DGP readings. There's quite a lot of data left to analyze. Um, and my colleagues, as I mentioned, that are running this project will also be releasing uh, a paper that summarizes the results from this phase of experimental testing. So from this data, a control strategy was hence developed to learn from individual facial action unit responses and react only if a correlation was found between an increase in light levels against the average illuminance on the wearable sensor itself. So the strategy is currently under development and uses Arduino to control the tilt angle of Venetian blind, the idea being that if you're able to detect glare on the personal occupant, can you then use it to control the blind to actually change the conditions to suit that occupant and monitor whatever glare is happening and, and change in real time. So they hope to also trial this with some smart glazing in the future. And if they're able to get hold of some smart glazing as well, they like to um, try it in this test facility, which is called the Mate Lab. So it's the Mobile Adaptive Technologies Experimental Lab, which has been de developed by PhD student Alessandra Luna Navarro and Dr. Mara Overend. So it's essentially a freestanding single-story open plan office with a floor area of 35 square meters, with a re replaceable facade elements and significant amount of state-of-the-art instrumentation for capturing in external and internal environmental conditions energy demand and occupant response. So it really represents an intermediate step between traditional lab tests that are precise but provide unrealistic conditions and the measurements in a real world offices, office that are realistic but sometimes difficult to control. So they hope to refine and test these method, methods that I've spoken about today within this facility when it's fully running in the next couple of months. So finally, although it's not a fully functioning demonstration unit as it stands, the students have been able to demonstrate the potential of using occupant-centered data to gather information on occupants experiencing glare and how one could then use this information to drive an adaptive facade. And really, we think in the group that this is the way buildings and data are actually going. So tailoring local, local environments to individuals, not only to save energy, but also to optimize the environment for that person, that individual person, to make them happier, more comfortable, and more productive. If you do have any questions, please let me know, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, but as I say, uh, this project's run by the other two PSU students in my group, and they'd be more than happy to answer your questions also. So, thanks very much for listening. <laughs> Indeed. So, are there any questions for Rebecca? This point. Yes. Has MI6 contacted you about <laughs> using your chamber as a torture device? <laughs> Be quite worrying. <laughs> yeah. A light touch torture device. <laughs> any further questions? I, there was one question when. Uh, perhaps a comment, but I sort of the ethics around this personally I sometimes sort of worry about where it's going with capturing 
this sort of information visually, but been assured that with the data that they do capture, it's all captured in real time and just broken down into the facial action units themselves, so they don't record and store the data of the different videos for the individual faces. So there is some privacy there within that. Indeed. Thanks very much. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao!